dear sisters and brothers in Christ. I owe my priestly vocation to this great and holy man of God, Frank Duff. I joined the Legion of Mary in 1978 and I was happy to visit Dublin in 1996 to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Legion of Mary, where I got an opportunity to visit Frank Duff's home and grave. Born in Dublin on 7 June 1889, Frank Duff was the eldest of seven children. His father and his mother were both civil servants in the British Civil Service. Frank was an excellent student and excelled in languages and modern literature. Frank's grandfather had a large library of books which in turn were passed on to him by his father. This explains why he had such a large collection of theology books in his library. Therefore, a passionate reader of high intellect, he passed the civil service examination and served in the Home Rule Administration and afterwards in the Irish state. However, on top of his day job, Frank as a young man joined the Vincent de Paul Society and was increasingly drawn to become a full-time religious worker. This calling consolidated with his reading of a book, True Devotion to the Blessed Virgin by Montfort. His realization that the book was true propelled him to leave the civil service and establish in 1921 a new Catholic lay organization later known as the Legion of Mary. Using his skills as a draftsman, Duff compiled a handbook that defined the Legion as a voluntary body at the disposal of the Bishop of the Diocese and the parish priest for any and every form of social service and Catholic action which these authorities may deem suitable to legionaries and useful to the welfare of the Church. For over six decades, Frank, a lifelong bachelor committed to celibacy, presided over a worldwide spiritual empire. Today, the Legion of Mary has an estimated 4 million active members and 10 million auxiliary members in close to 200 countries in most dioceses in the Catholic Church. On the ground rule of serving one's neighbor, members attend a weekly meeting and undertake each week to do voluntary work of substance in their community. Auxiliaries say certain prescribed prayers daily. So phenomenal was the spread of the legion that Frank, the friend of popes, was honored by being selected as a lay auditor in the 1960s at the final session of the Second Vatican Council in Rome. There he spent 97 days living with the Dominican Fathers. In his spare time, he addressed numerous meetings of bishops and lay groups from around the globe. He was acclaimed as a pioneer of the laity. A strong spirituality in Frank evolved over the years, which was necessity to him in his personal life and in the life of the association which he had brought into being. Where shall we find his spiritual knowledge? principally in the handbook of the region, which is obligatory reading for members and in the volumes which were composed of his addresses and papers given at legionary meetings of one kind or another. The papers appeared mostly in the official journal of the legion, Maria Legionis. It was his profound spiritual effective leadership that helped the legion grow this he did also by writing letters regularly and it is estimated that he wrote over a quarter of a million letters. Frank Duff soon learned as he became more fully acquainted with the life of the church that he was in a mighty current of Marian renewal. The growth of the legion proved the truth of Mary's mediation in practice. For along with belief in this truth, Frank Duff had another very strong conviction. In his idea of the apostolate, he was ahead of his time. He did not see the apostolate, that is, service of the souls of others, as a means of sanctification, an option among others like penance, spiritual reading, meditation. It was an essential part of the Christian vocation. To be truly a Christian, Frank Duff said, one must be an apostle. In the Handbook of the Legion, he wrote, 
Christianity is mostly understood and practiced only in a partial sense that is as an individualistic religion directed exclusively towards the benefiting of one's own soul and not at all concerned with others. This is a half circle, he said. Quoting Pius XI, a Christian, he once said, must pour his soul into another soul. Or again, apostleship and faith constitute the life of the church. Vatican II has heavily endorsed this contention. For this was the church was founded for. That by spreading the kingdom of Christ everywhere for the glory of God, the Father, the whole world might be brought into relationship with Him. He was a devoted lover of Our Lady and a faithful instrument of the Holy Spirit. On November 7, 1980, Frank Dub died and is buried in Klasnevin Cemetery, Dublin. In July 1996, the cause of his canonization was introduced by the Archbishop of Dublin. He is now known under the title Servant of God, one of the major stages in the process for a person to be declared a saint.